Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and this time I'm back to talk about some more horror books. I have recently been in a bit of a reading slump, particularly when it comes to the stabby books, but I'm finally moving out of that and this is a collection of the books that helped me to do that. All that being said, let's get started. First, I want to talk about a young adult horror book because once again, I do find that YA is a good way for me to continue to read horror when I'm just struggling a little bit to pick them up. And the one I read is The Haunting by Alex Bell. I've read her before. She's the same author that wrote Frozen Charlotte, which I really enjoyed. And this one is totally separate. It is about a teenage girl who, when she was 10 years old, had a terrible accident that caused her to end up in a wheelchair. And now she is an older teenager and she's going to visit her sickly grandmother and return back to an inn or a hotel where she originally had that accident and this hotel has a reputation for being haunted. She doesn't really believe it but in her return to this place she finds out more about the history of this hotel where there is a lot of supposed curses around sailors and ships and the story goes from there. For myself, honestly, the most fascinating part of this story was the inclusion of a character with a disability. I don't think I've read a story with a major character in a wheelchair before, and easily my favorite parts were where we actually got to find out how she had to accommodate that. She has a dog that helps her with different tasks, and just the challenges of things like tying her shoes, as well as the unfortunate challenge of having other people look at you differently, act differently around you and I thought those parts were really interesting. I definitely am looking to read more diverse horror as always but particularly I realized that I haven't read a lot of horror that features disabilities like this. So if you do have recommendations I would love for you to leave them in the comments. But beyond that aspect I'll be honest this felt like a really standard average haunted hotel story and if you know me you know that it's not my favorite subgenre to begin with. I did find the story just pretty average, pretty forgettable. And if it didn't have that diversity that I was looking for, I probably would have DNF this one. So not one that I would overly recommend, but if you do enjoy young adult horror and you're looking for something with that representation, this one you might want to check out, but it's kind of a mediocre recommendation from me. Next, I read The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Hopefully I pronounced that right. While I have a French heritage, I'm very much an English speaker. But I think most people know the general plot of this. I didn't actually realize this was a book because I am much more familiar with the musical, which is the reason I picked this up, if I'm honest. I was looking up a list of classic horror books, and when I found out this was a book, I immediately wanted to read it. But this is about an opera house that is possibly haunted by a ghost, and this phantom goes around making demands. He requires to have his own private box in order to watch, and he becomes obsessed with a young woman who is one of the performers. And when the opera house gets gets new management, they don't really want to take this phantom too seriously so they decide to give away his box because hey they are losing out on revenue and the phantom does not take that very well and things begin to escalate and accidents begin to happen. Now while I'm including this in my horror wrap up, I'm doing so because a lot of places will classify this as horror but in my opinion this is much more of a tragedy. It is not at all scary and while I knew the general plot of the book I just found myself very uninterested in the execution of it. My main complaint is the fact that it really lacks suspense because while the initial setup suggests that it's this like ominous ghost and people begin to call him a ghost at the beginning of the story, very early on you find out his backstory, who he is, that he is an actual person and what's going on and from there on out they call him Eric. And in my opinion, calling someone a phantom or a ghost is creepy and suspenseful and scary. But I don't find anyone named Eric that scary. So that really just kind of broke the suspense for me. But I did enjoy parts of this one, although if I'm honest, it really comes from the fact that I love the musical and pretty much the entire time I was reading this one, I had the musical soundtrack going on in the background and that definitely enhanced my reading experience. So if you love the musical and want to 
to see the original book that it's based off of, I would recommend this one. If you're looking for a creepy phantom story set in an opera house and are looking to be scared or horrified, you will not find that here. Overall, it was a decent classic. I am very hit or miss when it comes to more classic older books, but this one kind of worked for me. Next up is probably my favorite of the group, and that is The Apartment by S.L. Gray. And this is about a couple that have recently experienced a horrible home invasion where people broke into their homes when they were there and demanded their valuables. It was a very traumatic experience. And since then, they are just struggling to move on with their lives. They are struggling to feel comfortable in their own house. And that's where the story starts. We do get a glimpse of the invasion itself, but that is done through a flashback. Most of the story takes place afterwards. And at the beginning of the story, their friends suggest that they go on a vacation. However, you find out that they are very much strapped for money. So in order to make it affordable, they decide to do a house swap. So they agree to swap houses with another couple and they decide to go to Paris in France and the story goes from there. I really enjoyed a lot of aspects to this one. When they get to the place that they are staying, they find out that it is not what it was advertised. When they initially planned the setup, the house looked beautiful and immaculate and they were so excited. But when they got there, it was dingy and not as advertised and they find weird things in the closet and the neighbors are just not there except the ones that are, are just strange and it just just becomes this very uncomfortable experience. And I think that if you like the idea of a vacation story that goes a little bit wrong, this is one that will definitely intrigue you. Admittedly, I am one of those people who does get more nervous and anxious about things like Airbnbs and house swaps, even though they're much cheaper ways to travel than staying at traditional hotels. And this book definitely reinforced that because it was, yeah, just a vacation gone very wrong. And I I didn't actually pick up this book for quite a while because from the title I thought that this was just a standard haunted hotel story or haunted house story but I will say instead that the horror of this book really comes from different places it's not so much about a house with a presence in it instead it has more of a psychological aspect to it and is very much centered around grief so within the story you find out that the man had a previous wife and daughter and you find out his terrible tragic past and then the wife is struggling in her own ways they have a young child and you just get to see the breakdown of this couple's mental state and I really enjoyed this one it is slower paced and the characters are quite unlikable they are just difficult people they are very entitled and aren't necessarily the kind of people you would want to be friends with. I do want to mention the fact that this book has very low ratings on Goodreads. It's around the three star mark and I know a lot of people won't even touch books that low, but I do tend to like some very unpopular books and this one just worked for me. I found it very gripping. It was not perfect in my opinion, but did I enjoy it a lot? Yes. And I would personally recommend it if that sounds up your alley, if you share similar tastes to me. Not the creepiest one, but it definitely had a couple of oh damn gut punch moments that I connected with and again if you want a horror story that is very much centered around grief and family this one has a lot of emotional depth so I would personally recommend it again to the right audience and finally I read one more young adult horror don't worry I'm definitely going to be reading a lot more adult horror come the next round of recent reads but in this case, I picked up Fur by Sharon Gosling. And if you're not familiar, this is actually part of the Red Eye series, which is a whole bunch of horror YA books, which is what I've been reading lately. And this one centers around a teenager whose parents decide to buy a plantation out in the Scandinavian wilderness where they are going to be taking care of trees that are going to be cut down for lumber and they go into this quite blindly and go off to this very isolated place for a new start. 
The daughter is understandably not too impressed by this. She's leaving her friends behind. She is losing access to a big city and just is not excited about it. And when they get there, they meet different people, including a man who is very focused on the conservation of these trees. And soon enough, strange things begin to happen and you find out that the characters that live at the plantation seem to think that the forest surrounding them is responsible. So a couple things here, I'll say that this is a great book to read during the winter because it is set very much during a snowstorm for the most part where it's cold and wintry and the trees, the forest, are a major character in the story and I did really like that atmosphere. I did not like the teenager, however. She is very surly right from the beginning. I understand that she's not impressed by this move, but as an adult, I just find stories about grumpy teenagers really annoying, and she just spends a lot of the book complaining about her parents. So if that's something that bugs you in young adult horror, this one might be one to skip. I found her super frustrating, and admittedly her parents really weren't much better, so she did have things to complain about. But what did make the story interesting was the forest. I am not the most focused reader when it comes to atmosphere, but this one really did create a sense of place. And the trees were reasonably creepy. You really get that sense that the forest is this presence. And I did like those aspects. So not a perfect read, not one of my all time favorites, but a unique one that I would only recommend to people that generally do enjoy young adult horror. If you typically only read adult horror, probably skip this one. So that's it for this round of recent reads. I would love to hear your opinions down below. I would also love your recommendations. If you're aware of any horror books that feature characters with disabilities, I definitely need to read more, especially ones that just have a really good story behind it. Also recommend to me some of your favorite horror classics because unfortunately The Phantom of the Opera just didn't scratch that itch for me. It really was more of a tragedy and it just was not the horror classic I wanted it to be. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you again soon in another video. Okay, bye-bye.